Hello and welcome back to Learn Python, Your First Step to Data Science. In this new chapter, we're going to look at classify wine types. And in particular, in this video, we're going to look at importing the wine classification data sets and visualizing its characteristics. Let's dive right in. So if we go back to chapter five, in the chapter five IPYNB, which is the chapter five Jupyter Notebook file, in the accompanying code files, code files that you guys have received alongside the course. If we open this Jupyter Notebook, we can see the following. In N1, we first take a function from the datasets module in scikit-learn called load wine. And this function allows us to load our wine data that we're focusing on in this particular video. After we've imported this function, we can move on to N2. In N2, we assign the load wines results into wine data, which is a variable that holds our wine data sets. So that's N2. In N3, we call the directory function, the dir function, to investigate what the wine data object holds. If we look at the wine data object, we can see that there are five attributes. Number one, the description of the wine data. Number two, the inputs or the data portion of the wine data. Number three, the feature names, which is the column labels we can use to label the data part of the data sets. The target, which are numeric representations of different classes of wine that we want to predict and target names, which are corresponding to what numbers in target corresponds to what actual wine names we're looking at. So that's the directory of wine data in N3. In N4, we're printing out the description of wine data. So this is a wine data database. The data set characteristics are, there are 178 instances, with at least 50 in each three classes. If I was a data scientist, I'm going to first investigate why there are three classes with 50 instances each, but in total, there are 178 data points. Does this mean that 28 data points are invalid? Are they empty? Do they have missing data? All of these things are good ways to start investigating whenever they're in coherent information like this. The number of attributes is 13. We have 13 numeric predictive attributes. So if we look at the attribute information, we have the alcohol, the malic acid level, ash, alkalinity of ash, magnesium, total phenols, flavonoids, non-flavonoid phenols, and other chemical measurements of the wines. Like any good data set, it is showing us the summary statistics of these columns. We can see that the minimum, the maximum, the mean, and the standard deviation of these features don't align, which tells us that we haven't been handed a standardized data set, and standardizing the features may help us boost our performance in our classification project. We can see that there are no missing attribute values. And actually now the class distribution question has been answered. You can see here that class 0 has 59 instances, class 1 has 71 instances, and class 2 has 48 instances. In N5, we take the wine data property and assign this value to the variable called inputs to make it more clear what we're dealing with. In N6, we're taking the target property of wine data and we're assigning the value into outputs as a variable to keep it simple. In N7, we look at the shape of inputs. As we expect, there are 178 instances and 13 features available for us to use to predict the class. 
in in8 we look at the shape of the output and as we expect there are 178 class labels for us to predict in in10 we look at the wine data's feature names and we can see that it corresponds in a programming friendly way to the descriptions that we've just saw in in12 we import the data science package pandas as pd as per data science community's shorthand in in13 we create a new data frame a new pandas data frame consisting of the input data with the column names named as wine data dot feature names in in14 we first create a pandas data frame over the output data and we concatenate it with the original df along the first axis which is the column in in15 we see that most of the features are distributed close to each other although their magnitudes and the absolute values are located in different regions of the real number line and if we describe this we can see summary statistics in in16 where it counts the average standard deviation the minimum the quartiles and the maximum are shown for each of the features all of these are very important information for us to understand how we can predict the class correctly later. To make the table better, we're using the style property of the data frame and passing in a format call. In this format call, we're making every number formatted to five decimal places after the decimal place. We can see that this gives us a much better overview of the summary statistics on this data set. In N18, we want to visualize the correlations between different features to see whether there are patterns. We first import from matplotlib, which is a mathematical plotting library in Python. We're importing the submodule pyplot, Python plotting, as plt, as per the convention. We use the matrix show function in plt in the second line to show the correlation matrix of the data frame df. We set the X tick marks and the Y tick marks according to the column names of DF, and we create a new color bar in the plots. Let us now look at the plot. We can see that there are multiple things that are very negatively correlated with each other. For example, total phenols and the output, or the proline levels and the output. There aren't a lot of very positively correlated items, perhaps except between some of the features but nothing is strongly positively correlated with the output instead there are some features like total phenols that are strongly negatively correlated with the output and that's all there is to it so now that we understand the data we can go forth into understanding logistic regression and how it can help us build a classification model i'll see you guys next time